wristwatch symposium. I'm Austin. All right, before we get into the topic, wristwatch check. It's kind of fitting. Submariner, Rolex, 14060. Now, this is a tritium sub. Um, came out in 1996. It's a T serial. What we're going to be talking about is the ceramic sub, which is coming out September 1st. Now, the whole reason I'm making this video is because on the Rolex YouTube channel, they've released, um, well, you would certainly call it a teaser. No sound, seven seconds. What do you see? Well, first of all, I'll put a link in the description of this video. Click on it, check it out. Again, it's seven seconds. It starts, you see the ocean from above. Suddenly a frame, a triangle frame comes through. That's the 12 uh, indices. And then it turns blue. Uh, the inside turns blue and that's the chromolite. Chromolite came out in 2008. The deep sea sea dweller in 2008 was the first model to have that. Um, I remember being in um, uh, the RSC and, and reading about chromolite. It's basically uh, resin um, with luminescent material. It lasts for up to eight hours and unlike you know, the tritium and the superluminova and the luminova, and there's a whole sort of timeline of, of uh, the progression of the uh, luminescent materials that they used. Um, pretty much all of them green, except for chromolite, chromolite uh, blue, and that's the blue you see. And so then it fades and you see bubbles, uh, ostensibly in the sea. All right, seven seconds, no sound. I mean, Pretty cool. Uh, what is it? What does it mean? Well, clearly, clearly, this is a water going watch and um, it's going to be the sub. And that's no surprise. Pretty much everybody and their grandmother knows a sub is on the way. But we've got proof. Uh, September 1st. Oh, then it fades out and it says um, unveiling uh, 1 September. Check it out yourself, watch it half a dozen times like I did, and uh, there you go. Now, I've talked about my predictions for the sub. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for that video, but um, yeah, the sub's on the way, it looks like. Uh, could this be another water going watch? Uh, I guess it could be. We, never, we don't know, but I think pretty much just the sub. Um, will there be some other good things? Uh, hopefully, hopefully. I mean, we haven't seen hardly anything, in fact, nothing from Rolex for ages, and we're pretty starved for stuff. So I think the main thing is obviously going to be the sub, um, and the next year, of course, uh, 2021, that would be the uh, Explorer 2, right? Okay, I think that's, I think that's right. Um, anyway, uh, the 50th anniversary of the, of the Explorer too, if, if uh, my memory serves me correctly. Anyway, that's all I've got. That's all I've got. Just check out the seven second video. What do you think? Can you derive any more clues from it? Well, I couldn't. I know it's going to have a triangle and it's going to have the chromolite in it and, uh, and it's going to be a water going watch. That's all I've got. All right. Let me know what you think. Um, let me know what you uh, hope to see in this new sub. Now, for me, I'm a pre-ceramic guy, so the fact that it's going to have that ceramic bezel, it's already a turnoff for me. I'm not a fan of the, the shine of it or the width of it. I think this is much more subtle. Now, it would be amazing if they actually achieved this width, um, and I'm talking about the roundness and, and, and sort of, I like it thinner. If they were to do that, I could get over the the fact that it's shiny. Hey, you know, who says it has to be shiny? Um, I guess that they could make the Cerachrome not shiny, not likely to happen because shiny is fancy. They've gone up market. That's the way they do it. Uh, boy, I can imagine the complaints uh, if, if it was to have a matte finish. I would love it. I think I'd probably be one of the only ones not likely to happen. All right. I'd love to see it, but <laughs> pretty much uh, uh, it ain't going to happen. All right. And uh, of course, my speculation was going to be new movement. And 
I'm going out on a limb here, and I would love to see them put the Siloxi hairspring uh, in there, which they've only been using on some of the women's watches, and I think they've actually been testing it. And have they tested it enough that us men can get it? <laughs> you know, um, we'll see. Um, it'll either have the blue parachrome or the Siloxi. If they have the Siloxi hairspring, uh, it'll be the first Siloxi hairspring in a men's watch. It'll be amazing. It'll be revolutionary. It'll be, uh, you know, a paradigm shift. If it has the blue parachrome spring, kind of cool, uh, kind of, you know, um, nothing that the previous one didn't have or, or any of the contemporary models. And of course the case, uh, shape, which I think everybody agrees that the width of those fat lugs are going to be shaved down. They're probably not going to shave them enough for me. I like something like this, but, um, still it's exciting about time. I'm kind of excited about it. Let me know what you think. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time.